like to welcome back to the show, Dr. Tracy Alloway. And today we're talking about stress and athletes. And I'll tell you, it's one of the topics that's trending like crazy because of the Olympics. But we have our friend, Dr. Tracy Alloway, to talk about this and educate us on what we could do, even with our kids, even if they're not Olympians just yet. Tracy, it's great to see you. And, you know, it's one of those things everybody's talking about right now. It's like the main story in the news. Yeah, thanks so much for having me, Mark. You're right, it is on everyone's attention right now. And, and even this idea of how we can prepare our kids, even if it's not on the Olympic stage, a lot of our children compete in, in sports and uh, at local levels, and how can we best prepare them for what might happen? All right, so one of the things that you wanna talk about is the ability to develop a sense of resilience. So explain really what that is, and then we'll go into how to do that. Yeah, that's a great question. And resilience is decided to bounce back. So imagine a ball, if it's a, a little deflated, it's a lot harder for it to bounce back after a setback, a challenge, or even a failure. And so we want to kind of give our children enough air, if you will, in their ball so that they can bounce back with, uh, you know, with that sense of optimism. And really optimism is one of the things we need to look at. And we think of optimism sometimes as all or nothing, but a more productive way to think of optimism is on a scale. On one end, you have blind optimism optimism where you're like, oh, it'll all be fine. It's going to be great. And that leads to a lack of preparedness. So we're not actually preparing ourselves up for potential challenges. But the midpoint, the kind of sweet spot is what we call realistic optimism, where you can acknowledge what is in your control and what is not in your control. And a way to encourage ourselves and our children is to focus on really what is in your control that you can change rather than trying to focus on everything and then feel overwhelmed. Now, one of the things that you mentioned when you talk about this, if you're prepared or not prepared. So maybe it's one of those things that you kind of go over with your child, all the things that they did to get to that point to help to calm them down and help them to focus. Is that a good idea with that then? Yeah, and that actually works for two reasons. The first is exactly that. It shifts their perspective to what they've actually done. So a lot of times when we have the anxiety, it's because we feel we're not prepared enough and we feel lack of preparation because there's so many things out of our control. So by recalibrating and bringing them back to the moment and saying, oh, but you did A, B, C, D, you've been training, you've been doing this and so on, it refocuses them on what they've actually done. And the second part is really in how we praise our children. And research talks a lot about the difference between praising the person, like saying, oh, you're so awesome, though, it's going to go great, versus praising their effort. Well, you've worked really hard, and so hopefully you'll see results. And we know that when we praise the person, that kind of you're the best, you're awesome is connected to self-esteem. And it's a lot harder to develop a sense of resiliency, a sense, a sense of bounce backness, if you will, when we're so connected to our person-based praise. So it's much more effective as a parent and even for yourselves to praise the effort. Yeah, but remember you put forward this effort, which means they can calibrate, they have a sense of agency. It's interesting when you talk about being resilient, one of the things that goes hand in hand with that is experience. Because the more experience that you have playing any sport, the more you could kind of fall back on, hey, I've seen this before. You know, I didn't do that well on that side, but now I'm prepared for it. So one of the things that I do with one of my kids who's a great athlete is he'll journal. He'll write down good things and bad things from each game. So then come the next game, now he has it written that will help him out, not only with his confidence, but also his resilience because he's seen it before. Because a lot of times you forget about that stuff. I love that, Mark. And I say that to my clients too in my therapy practice. It's called the observer effect or the actor effect, where that writing, that journal serves as that third person perspective, where it's almost like the outside you is reminding your inner voice, hey, but wait a second, look at all these things you did well before. I think another thing too, and it just is just from experience, a lot of times when kids, they kind of get in their head, you could kind of break it down a little bit and just say, what's the one thing you wanna focus on this game? Maybe it's play faster, maybe it's do that one move and that's it and just focus on that because once they get in there, they kind of let their guard down and they're playing, right? Yeah. But yeah. I feel like that's one thing then they could kind of hone in on maybe just one skill to do. 
That's great. And I'd love to add to that. That's again, something I do with my clients too. It's almost like you're in the room with me, Mark, when I'm having this <laughs> session. Uh, but I do, I always say, what's the one thing you did well before? And that's linking back to when we're talking about experience. So I'll say, what's the one thing you did well before? Can you do it again here? And that does two things. It reminds them of past experience, like you said, that can motivate them and help create that resilience. But it also gives them confidence that if I've done it once before or twice or three times before, I can surely do it again today and right here. And when we round this out, we talk about social support. Obviously, what we're talking about now is like parents, you know, interacting with kids and helping them out. What are some other things that we could tap into when it comes to the social side of things? And this is a really powerful piece from research where we do know that even a hug, that validation from someone who matters, whether it's coach or parent or a sibling, even getting that validation boosts their oxytocin level. That's their bonding hormone or even the hug hormone level. And what that does is it actually turns down the dial on their stress system in the brain. So don't uh, discount the value of even a hug after a game, you know, and just saying that was amazing. I saw you play really hard out there because that automatically can dial down the stress and leave a positive emotion in that memory of the game that they can then bring back again for the next game. That is great. And then anything at like, let's say the high level, anything that you know of that the Olympians are currently doing to kind of calm their selves down or help themselves focus before the big moment? Yeah, I think that's a great question. And certainly we know that at this level, it's not so much a matter of physical skill as, men, as much as mental toughness, it's resiliency. Uh, and, a, and a big thing is what um, psychologists call optimal arousal level, essentially knowing what level of stress is enough to give you the edge and not too much to push you over the edge. And, and we all use that in our daily lives, but that certainly plays a big role on a competitive stage like this as well. Well, Tracy, thank you so much for all your time and all your information. If people want to learn more about you, where can they go? I have a website, tracyalloway.com. I'm also on social media as drdrtracyalloway.com. Thanks again.